This is a story about spring and about a lake coming to life after a long, cold New England winter. At 71 square miles, Lake Winnipesaukee is New Hampshire's largest water body and has long served as a major regional recreation and travel destination. Indeed, summer folk have flocked to Winnie since the mid-1800s, when so-called rusticators began heading there to escape the inner city swelter. Today, summer remains a busy time on the big lake, with boaters bustling about the water and everything from pontoon boats to paddleboards and crowds of visitors thronging the major lakeside towns of Meredith, Wolfboro, Laconia, and Alton Bay. Spring, on the other hand, reveals a quieter side of Winnipesaukee and brings with it unique opportunities for exploring the lake and surrounding land. It's a time of transition and rebirth, a time to appreciate the dawn of a new season. Explore New England is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers, your local REI co-op, REI believes a life outdoors is a life well lived. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And visit NewEngland.com. When the ice finally vanishes from Winnipesaukee's surface, salmon fishermen emerge, dusting off tackle and readying boats to take advantage of the spring bite. It's a time local guide Jason Parent looks forward to in a big way. So I've been fishing here on Lake Winnipesaukee for close to 30 years now. Uh, my grandparents owned a house in Belmont and I would travel down from Berlin with my uh, Chevy S10 and a 12-foot aluminum boat and a seven and a half horsepower Ted Williams motor in the back and I was that guy that was out there in the spring with the snow blowing and the, and the two lines in the water, you know, learning to catch fish. Why do I like fish for salmon? I enjoy fishing for salmon because every day is a different challenge. Every day is not the same. It's not the same lure, it's not the same bait. It's always a new, exciting uh, change of pace. It's, it's a different bait, it's a different place on the lake. It's the fight, it's the jump out of the water. It's the constant battle of, of the, you know, the fish in this environment is spectacular. Jason, how you doing? Tom, how's it going? Good, good to see you again, man. Welcome back up to Lake Winnipesaukee. <laughs> oh, man, always a pleasure to get back up here. And uh, with these salmon, they get up pretty early, don't they? They do get up very <laughs> early in the morning, no question about it. Excellent. So uh, what's the game plan? Uh, just uh, go out, troll some uh, troll some live bait for them? We're going to troll some live bait. We're going to troll some flies. We're going to see if we can hook up to a couple of landlocks and maybe a rainbow. And really? Get rainbow, some action. too? Get some action. Excellent. I like the idea of a rainbow. I didn't. Uh, you didn't tell me about that part. Well, that's a surprise. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll Let's, uh, let's hope we get one, and uh, but let's get going so we can uh, get this dawn bite. Let's do it. Excellent. Jason made it clear that he was eager to start fishing, so we dispensed with the small talk and headed deep into the lake in search of salmon. Got a bait. What are those baits? So this here is a shiner. 
and we're just going to hook it right through the nose like that real small shiner real small single hook and we're going to let him out there what are the salmon eating at this time of year primarily primarily smelt primarily smelt what they're chasing live bait they'll start going after the flies once the hatches come out and things like that so we're going to run this back there about 30 feet behind the boat we're gonna hook it up to the downrigger ball. We have the, the release clip set very, very loose. So you put that in there, when the fish hits, you can pop it right out. So we got that set real loose. And then we just lower her down. How far back do you put it? So we're gonna run this here today at about, start at about 16 feet. Got a fish, got a fish right here. Fish on. Oh yeah, here he goes. All right, he's fighting. Oh, he's off. Ah. You gotta be kidding me. Nope. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, right <laughs> at the <laughs> boat. Lost him. Ah. You're up. All right, man. I'm on it this time. I'm not messing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a pretty looking fish right there. It's a one year old. You can tell. Yeah. How do you know? It's this size, pretty much. You mean that thing grew that much in one year? They stock them very very small. So they stocked this fish when he was probably um, let's say three inches long, maybe four inches long. Yeah. And then they uh, they bring them in here and they stock them a bunch of them, and he's already unhooked even. How Get long? Now how long do they live? Um, they'll live five, six years till they get caught. Uh-huh. Is this your favorite time of year to, to, to fish for salmon? August is my favorite. Really? Yeah. Now why, why in August? I think that the water would be so warm they'd be down deep. Right. So right now a salmon can be at 60 feet, he could be at 20 feet, he could be at five feet over there by because the water's all the same temperature. Mm -hmm. But in August, they can't survive in the warm water. So they have to go down. So you really only have to fish the bottom half of them. So you can target them a little bit better. It gives you a little bit better chance of, uh, of finding them. <laughs> Plus they've had all summer to grow. Um, so their weights are higher, their, the fish are bigger. Um, it, it's a really good time. Oh. Got a fish on there. All right. Got a fish on there. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good at this. Oh, he's taking line. Uh-oh. Got him? Yep. All right. Got a pepper partner. Yeah, you know he's big when he doesn't jump, right? They try and stay deep, but typically it's a little bit bigger fish. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a monster. 
That's a big one. That's what we want right there. Oh! Take your time. Take your time. That's the one we're looking for. Yeah! All right, man. Woo! There's a keeper. That's a nice one, huh? That's a beauty. <laughs> yeah, you almost turned me all the way around. Oh, man, that's awesome. There's like a that beauty. Guy. Woo! Big male. Oh, man. Look at that. Wow, man. That's uh, that's my biggest landlock. <laughs> I can tell you that. Woo! That is a, that's beautiful. Man, nice fish. How can you tell he's a male? Hip, get a little hook jar right here. Uh -huh. This kite on the front. Yeah. For salmon anglers like Jason and Hayden, spring represents the start of a new fishing season. But those who cast a naturalist's eye towards the surrounding woods will find other signs of Winnipesaukee's reawakening. Paddlers also appreciate the arrival of spring on Winnipesaukee, especially since powerboat traffic is typically light. The region's fickle weather is the biggest challenge to planning a trip, and kayakers need to prepare for cold water conditions. But I had that well covered on the day I kayaked to Stone Dam Island with Dave Mallard, the Land and Stewardship Director of the Lakes Region Conservation Trust. Are you Dave? Yeah. Hey Dave, how you doing? I'm Tom. Good Tom, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Well, we've got a nice uh, nice day for paddling out to the island, huh? Absolutely, perfect now, how, day. Far, how far a paddle is it, roughly? It's about a mile and a half. We have to go out around the point mm -hmm. and into the bay. Uh, it's about a mile and a half. Is there like a little landing area there or we have a beach a, or something? We have a dock. Oh, wow. Yeah, a 40 foot dock. No kidding, so you could even bring a powerboat Absolutely. there? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's awesome that you have good public access like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Public all right, well, let's not waste any time. Let's get the kayak. If you can help me with my kayak, and yeah, we'll, we'll bring it over and we'll get going. All right. I met Dave at the Cattle Landing Launch Area in Meredith, in the northern portion of the lake and we set off on a 30-minute paddle to Stone Dam. While most of Winnipesaukee's shoreline is privately owned, the Conservation Trust manages four islands that are open to the public, including Five Mile, Blanchard, Ragged, and Stone Dam, the largest property. Arriving on the northeast shore of Stone Dam, Dave and I beached our kayaks next to the long dock that can accommodate boats of up to 25 feet. A few steps away, nestled amid some newly leafed out oaks, was an old cabin. Built in the mid-1800s, the historic structure was originally part of an old homestead on Alton Bay. After being used by a children's camp for a number of years, it was moved to Stone Dam in 1985 and now serves as a venue for cultural and natural history presentations. Well, Stone Dam Island is unique in a lot of ways. Uh, for the Lakes Region Conservation Trust, this was the first major project that the trust uh, completed, meaning the per first big property that they owned, did a campaign to raise the money to purchase it. The, the land trust formed in 1979. This property was purchased in 1982. I start, my position here is the, the land and stewardship director. So it's my job to oversee the, the stewardship program, uh, which is the management of all of our properties. And we, uh, we have 25,000 acres in conservation. Uh, about 18,000 of that we own. The other is conservation easements. So. I oversee the monitoring of our conservation easements, make sure that the terms of those easements are being upheld and we monitor those easements every year.
From the cabin, Dave and I set out on the loop trail that skirts much of the island and winds through stands of hemlock beach, white pine, and red oak. Near the summit, we paused to take in the view of the lake and admire a yellow rumped warbler that was passing through on its northward migration. For birders, Stone Dam offers the chance to see numerous species in a single day, particularly in the spring. So David, tell me about, uh, about these holes in this tree. Well, those are from, uh, would be the pileated woodpecker. The big ones. Yeah, yeah. the big one with the redhead. Uh -huh. uh, judging by the size and the spacing of the mining. Yeah. And they're going for the insects and the insect larvae in the bark. Sure. Wow, they make a, quite a hole, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What's bird. interesting is that when they mine holes like this, sap will drip out of the cambium and fill this. And yeah, insects are drawn to that, so they'll be able to come back, eat the insects oh, no that kidding. are drawn to the sap. It's like a trap. Yeah, kind of. No kidding. One of the more unique natural features on this island is way up here on the summit is this year-round freshwater pool of water. It's a large vernal pool uh -huh. and it stays wet all year round. Really? Yeah, even during the summertime? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. And it, so it holds water all year round and, uh, and it's probably, it's a, you know, a breeding area for all kinds of amphibians. Uh, salamanders. Nukes. Salamanders, wood frogs, tree frogs. Uh, Wow, that's pretty cool. A little hidden gem up here. Absolutely. There is some Native American history on the island as well. The Algonquin tribe had a very large settlement over in the Weirs, and they used the islands for hunting and fishing. And it's believed that uh, this island was used as sort of a, a boat manufacturing or repair spot. There was, uh, there was birch trees here that they used for their birch bark canoes. And there was large enough trees to cut and dig out for their dugout canoes. Uh -huh. uh, somewhere on the island, uh, there's said to be a rock very similar to this in size and shape, where it has sort of a bowl top. A big glacial erratic. Yeah, it was a, exactly, an erratic. And sort of an undercut lip where there was a three grooves um, sort of worn into the rock with one groove leading out to the edge and it was uh, believed to be a place where the, uh, the Algonquin melted the uh, birch sap uh, that, which they used to seal the birch bark canoes. Cool. Those canoes were very light and sleek in the water, so they used them mostly for hunting and fishing and moving around. Unlike the birch, I mean the dugout canoes, which were big old yeah. heavy things, they yeah. could take a lot of people. Exactly. Deer, mink, squirrel, and even the occasional bear visit the island, and if you study the forest floor carefully, you might spy one of the resident toads, salamanders, wood frogs, or garter snakes. The long loop trail eventually leads to a picnic area along a narrow beach on the island's southern shore. It's a popular spot among summer boaters and paddlers. Thank you. 
Having completed our short hike around the island, Dave and I found ourselves back at the historic cabin where we had started, ready to begin our return trip to Cattle Landing. In forests and waters alike, Winnipesaukee's spring awakening happens gradually and takes many forms. And waiting to revel in the annual transformation are folks like Jason Parent and Dave Mallard. While each take different cues from nature that a new season has begun, it all boils down to the same thing. The Big Lake is coming to life. <laughs> 